Parliamentarian killed inflation caps for pharma companies in this bill. Senate parliamentarian kills key policy and Dem reconciliation bill. That's, no. No. I, I refuse. Democrats have lost a key piece of the prescription drug pricing reform. No shot. No. Jail that person. Throw that person in jail. No. And hire a new person. That's an appointed position. They don't get to do that. If the Democrats don't fight for this, I'm going to lose my fucking mind, dude. Oh my God, this is so annoying. The Dems' second major policy to lower prices and inflation caps is the Kaiser Family Foundation explains this bill requires drug manufacturers to pay a rebate if drug prices increase faster than the rate of inflation. Briefed on the McDonald's overnight guidance, the parliamentarian ruled that the inflation caps for commercial market do indeed violate the bird rule. Here's the bird rule, dude. I'll flip the fucking bird inside of you, okay? Get the fuck out of here. What is this shit? They did this with a $15 minimum wage. I really do hope that they don't let this happen with this. Uh, they, I really do hope that they don't, they don't allow this to happen. Okay. No, unacceptable. The Democrats will need to change their inflation caps. No, Leo. Uh, the Democrats will need to change their inflation caps language. So the caps no longer apply to, to the commercial market. And the change will affect the total savings of the bill. Inflation caps brought $100.7 billion of savings according to the CBO. How much of that came from Medicare and how much of that from the commercial market is unclear. But one estimate says that removing the latter would cost up to $40 billion in savings. That's crazy that the parliamentarian, a fake made up position, a fake made up hurdle. What did you get? Nice. A fake made up position could just like fucking turn around and be like, yeah, I decided that this fake made up position of mine allows me to just like fundamentally alter a bill that will cost, that will make the price of this bill $40 billion more expensive. That's fucking bullshit. And anyone who, uh, I mean, we should not let them get away with this. That's all I'm going to say. Just completely ridiculous. Anyway, bizden selam söyle Murat. Murat selam selam söylüyorlar. Murat's eating barbecue ribs right now. Anyway, um, what did you mean by Pakistan as a CIA state earlier this week? Isn't Pakistan hugely indebted to China and is constantly ratioed by U.S. Uh, the, the Pakistani military runs the country and the military and it's in, and it's security forces in general are directly in contact with the CIA. Anyway, um, I'm just waiting to hear who's going to torpedo this whole thing, to be honest. Uh, I mean, this is like held together with ticker tape, so we'll see what happens. It's, it's like, like I said, it's just good enough, which means it's too good, okay, for a lot of people. Kirsten Cinema already took the carried interest loophole out immediately. Um, and, you know, Joe Manchin is like uh, sitting around looking for ways to destroy this thing, torpedo this thing, but uh, uh, ultimately conceded. Let's see what fucking happens. They're, they're trying to gut it as best as possible, even though the bill itself... Already comes, just like every other fucking Democratic bill, uh, with uh, concessions. Um, so we'll see. <sighs> Is there a zero dish strategy in the U.S. like Germany? Um... A lot of the bills that uh, the the Democratic Party puts will be uh, against. They they won't deficit spend. Are you in support of the anti-inflation bill? I think it's 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 decent. Which when you're used to just having L's and nothing in general, then just decent is something you look forward to. It doesn't go nearly as far as it needs to for uh, climate change provisions or climate change uh, funding, but. Uh, yeah, I'm 
I'll take the fucking crumbs at this point. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing you can do. I, I want national health care, guys. You know what I mean? I, I don't even want fucking Medicare for all. I don't think Medicare for all goes far enough. I, I want nationalized health care. Do you understand? But I'm not going to sit here and act like, uh, you know, if we, if this is, you know, even lowering, even allowing Medicare to be able to negotiate pharmaceutical prices is not a good thing. Like, it is a good thing. Not only is it a good thing, but it's, a, it, it's, it's wild that it's even up for debate. The only country on the planet where that is illegal for the government to do. Only, only made legal recently. Only made legal recently for the VA. Oh my God, Bill Maher talking about fat acceptance. That's awesome. That's great. Bill Maher talking about the issues that actually matter. Anyway, um... Uh, Paul Krugman, can't believe I might agree with him on this, talks about the IRA. He says, when I look at the substance of those attacks, uh, I can't help feeling more cheerful than I have in months. For one thing, the debate over proposal feels like a return to a more innocent time where Republicans try to make their case with dishonest claims about economic policy, not insane conspiracy theories. So Paul Krugman is a cuck. And obviously he's like describing it in cuck terms. But this is a good thing. Um, I do talk about this. Remember, remember when I uh, used to talk about like how the old school '90s Republican Party would talk about like tort reform and and you know deficits, like deficit hawking. But the new school Republican Party decided that that is not actually a good thing to talk about, and that nobody really gives a shit about that, no matter how much you fucking scream about it. So that's why they do the conspiracy stuff. That's why they do the reactionary right wing populist shit, which is very successful. So anything. When you, when you actually do anything as the Democratic Party, the reactionary Republicans have to stand in opposition to that. So when you legitimately put forward economic policy that's even marginally better for American citizens, they are going to come out against it. They're going to be like, oh, no, it's bad. Infrastructure spending is a great example of this, where they like literally have to come out and be like, no, even though our towns are fucking underwater, we have to be against infrastructure spending because Dem Democrats are pushing for it. Same with this, Right. So I think like calling this the Inflation Reduction Act was a really solid idea. It was a really good idea saying that this does actually reduce inflation or it combats inflation, not by, uh, you know, increasing interest rates, but instead by using the legislative body is a really solid way to sell it. Okay. And uh, GOP fucking freaking out over it is good because it's like super tame shit. Um, I don't like that, of course, uh, Paul Krugman says, it's a good omen for Democrats' new approach to common policy, one that relies mainly on carrots rather than sticks, on incentives to do the right thing rather than penalties for doing the wrong thing. Um, we know that climate change uh, is, is happening. We know that it is, uh, uh, it is uh, e inevitable that uh, the societal collapse will happen. So the carrot stick argument is fucking idiotic. We don't even need sticks. We need fucking guns at this point, okay? The idea of, like, uh, you know, carbon taxes... A, a policy provision, a key policy that literally, uh, uh, what's his face, uh, before he started uh, going against Obama, before he ran against Obama, a, a uh, policy position that Republicans agreed on, a policy posi position that Republicans actually uh, chose as, a, yeah, John McCain, a policy position that Republicans actually chose as a countermeasure. Are you, are you out? All right, peace, dude. Thanks, thanks for everything, Marat. Is ridiculous. Time and time again, I have shown you that uh, you know Republicans, when when Democrats push, uh, when Democrats push the needle, okay, when they advocate for certain things. Okay, when Democrats advocate for certain things and, and truly are able to, to popularize certain uh, uh, policy provisions, right? Republicans have to counter that and make concessions. But because Democrats have chosen not to do that for so many fucking years, we've forgotten about a time when the Republican Party collectively had to find a, a, uh, a conciliatory measure in the form of Obamacare. Obamacare was... A, a right wing uh, a, a, a right wing policy 
John McCain's carbon tax, cap and trade, was a right-wing policy. It was a right-wing policy that was built around concessions, built around conceding to an actual uh, socialized healthcare uh, measure, an actually popular socialized healthcare measure, an actually popular climate change, uh, uh, you know, like an adequate solution to combating co climate change. So remember that. The Obamacare, or also known as the Affordable Care Act, was not only a right-wing uh, solution that was uh, conceding to the uh, otherwise left-wing Democratic Party proposals for socialized health care, it was also first implemented in Massachusetts by Romney. By Mitt Romney. It was known as Romney Care in Massachusetts. It was very popular, very successful, but it was literally right-wing. So don't let fucking people fool you into thinking that, like, um, Republicans are anything but reactionary or the Democrats are, um, you know, the Democrats are just simply incapable. Okay? <sighs> yeah, the Heritage Foundation came up with the ACA originally in the 90s. So, what I'm saying is that we need to... Uh, what? What I'm saying is that we need to vote for more libs? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we need to fucking bully the Democrats in Congress. We need to bully them where they stand. We need to make sure that they feel your wrath. We need to make sure that they... Uh, we, we need to kick their asses into fucking gear so that they do actually put forward some level of uh, progressive legislation. Okay. So remember that. Anyway, GOP, uh, we're already seeing just how hard it is for Republicans to attack this approach. It will get even harder. Yeah, that stuff is bullshit. Republicans don't give a fuck about that. The carrot and the stick uh, part of this bill is not necessary or important. The act calls for $369 billion in climate spending, mainly tax credits for families and businesses that adopt clean energy technologies, improve energy efficiency, and so on. It would also spend $64 billion on extending subsidies that help keep health insurance affordable. This new spending would be fully paid for, and then some, mainly by cracking down on tax avoidance and evasion, which is why re Republicans are freaking the fuck out. The biggest revenue source is to be a new minimum tax on large corporations. The legislation would also give desperately underfunded IRS more resources to crack down on tax cheats. It would seek to save Medicare money by giving the program power to negotiate over drug prices. So the two key provisions in here that are going to make this bill a pay for bill are like Paul Krugman adequately uh, uh, summarizes here, Medicare negotiation power, which is an Obama era uh, legislation that Obama wanted to do that uh, he didn't really push for that much and was made illegal in the, in the Obamacare as a part of the concessions that they gave to the Republican party that never even ended up voting for it. Uh, so remember that Medicare, uh, I think it's called Medicare D, which is uh, literally like 15 uh drugs that uh 15 drugs that like medicare as a uh large purchaser of uh of pharmaceuticals would be allowed to negotiate pharmaceutical prices um this is a normal process for every other country that's the reason why if you go to turkey even or if you go to part d was bush era not obama part d was part d has been around yes i'm saying that like obama said that he was going to uh, implement this. Anyway, Medicare is the the government health insurance for uh, for for old people. Okay, for the elderly, it is an absolute necessity for their survival. Every other country does this. These people are not productive. They're not in the labor force. They need desperately help from the government. They pay into it their entire fucking lives, and then that's what you get uh, by the end of your life. Uh, okay, so just understand that Medicaid is for poor people, but we're not going to get into that. So Medicare is still incredibly expensive. It's a gigantic tax burden or it's a gigantic uh, a sizable chunk of where the government spends its money. Why? Because pharmaceutical prices are incredibly fucking high, sometimes 10 times higher than our counterparts over in Canada, what they pay for insulin. 
insulin, of course, which was uh, sold as a patent for $1 by a Canadian uh, researcher, if I'm not mistaken, specifically so that everyone could have access to insulin. But, uh, you know, these disgusting, psychotic, parasitic, vulturous, uh, for-profit uh, uh, you know, uh, healthcare and pharmaceutical corporations turned around and still uh, try to charge you thousands of dollars because without insulin, you'll fucking die. Inelastic demand, as I've talked about time and time again. Yes, the patent was sold for one dollar. So, why can Canada pay? Why can the average Canadian citizen get away with paying? 10 times less for insulin than the average American citizen. Why? Well, that's because when they are purchasing this medicine in bulk to enter it into the country, they are able to bargain with the providers of insulin. Corporations come in, they say, well, you're going to buy a lot, right? You're buying in wholesale. So you can do wholesale uh, prices. We'll give you wholesale prices. Now, we here in the United States of America are not allowed to do that. It is, it is illegal for the government to negotiate. The government is still a massive purchaser of insulin and other kinds of uh, uh, pharmaceutical products, and yet they are not allowed to negotiate for it. The VA was the first government healthcare provider that was able to uh, negotiate uh, uh, pharmaceutical prices uh, when they're purchasing it wholesale. And this provision in the IRA will allow Medicare to do the same thing. This is incredibly good. It's, a, it's not only incredibly good, but it's like the bare minimum that every other fucking country does. Right? Insulin is covered here. There's no charge to the client. Sorry, I meant like when Canada buys insulin, but the cost of insulin for individuals that uh, that that use it is still a, there's a real cost to it. You know what I mean? Even if you're not paying out of pocket, negotiations are illegal for the government to engage in. Understand that. Only country on the planet where negotiations are illegal, they're banned. <clears throat> Why is the government not allowed to negotiate the cost of wholesale insulin? Can you explain, please? Well, my friend, do you want to hear the, uh, you know, the, the pharma lobby uh, take on it? Or do you want to hear the real reason? Because the real reason is because they just can get away with it. They have bought our politicians for many, many decades, um, for, since the beginning of time, pretty much. And America is, you know, a bunch of corporations and a big trench coat and not a real fucking government. And uh, they can get away with doing such things. They've bought out all of our politicians and they can get away with making it illegal. And most of you are too busy talking about like fucking, I don't know, the one trans 14 year old that's on the swim team in Utah to pay attention to that real fuckery that's happening. Okay? Because you're a fucking idiot. Most Americans are fucking dumb. You know this. You live with them every day. You yourself is, are, are, are probably dumb too. So am I. Okay? We're too busy fighting about fucking, uh, you know, uh, uh, trans bathroom bills or whatever the fuck to pay attention to these crooks that steal and cheat and lie regularly and make your life worse. That's the real reason. Huh. Anyway. Javier Exile, thank you for the five get the subs. Now, Republicans are attacking the bill. They can't openly defend their interests of tax evaders and avoiders. Yes, they can, and they are doing that. Although in their term efforts, uh, long-term efforts to starve the IRS of resources shows that in practice they are pro-tax cheaters. What they have done instead is claim, citing an estimate from con Congress's uh, nonpartisan Joint Committee on Taxation, that the legislation would raise taxes on the middle class and that this violates one of Joe Biden's campaign pledges. It's a bogus claim on multiple levels. First, the act wouldn't raise personal income taxes on anyone. Full stop. It just wouldn't. But the Joint Committee on Taxation... Projects instead are distributional effects, an attempt to estimate 
the indirect burden on families resulting from other taxes, which in this case essentially means the possible effect on wages of requiring large corporations to pay a minimal amount of tax. Estimating these effects is useful, but are they a tax increase on workers? Almost any government policy will have an adverse effect on the income of someone somewhere. Is everything the government does a tax increase? Furthermore, if I were going to consider the indirect effect on family incomes of legislation that doesn't directly affect their taxes, why not consider the whole act, not just a part of it? The Joint Committee of Taxation table that Republicans are citing notes that it excludes the impact of several major pieces of the bill that would help families in ways ranging from reduced drug costs and larger health insurance subsidies to clean energy initiatives. Add those in and the middle class almost surely ends up ahead. This is how most of these initiatives work. Medicare for all is seen as a, a, a burdensome, costly uh, bill that will end up, uh, you know, uh, increasing your taxes or whatever, except it ends up actually saving you a fuckload of money in, the, in return. Have fun getting Zoomers and millennials to pay for the boomers' retirement. Yeah, not happening. The old age and survivors insurance trust fund, which pays retirements and survivors' benefits, will only be able to pay scheduled benefits on a timely basis until 2034 and will only pay 77% of scheduled benefits. Okay, dude. Stop uh, diluting uh, the argument that I'm making. Every kind of government spending initiative, okay, requires some mechanism to increase its funds. And ultimately, if you are in the working class, the, the, the math is that you always end up ahead if you're in the working class. The wealthy will actually have uh, more of their money taken away from them and they'll you know, use less of the benefits that the government is offering because they're usually above the pay grade that the government is like uh, helping, okay? So you end up, you end up reducing medicine prices. You end up uh, getting more help from the government in return so you end up ahead when you're the middle class, but the way that this works, the way that, uh, you know, the way that this works, unfortunately, makes it seem, it makes it easy to basically claim that, no, they're taxing you. They're taxing you. They always do. They always do this. Okay. The JCT assumes that the significant part of the revenue to be gained from taxing corporations would eventually come out of wages. That's an area of intense academic debate, but there are good reasons to believe that when you're cracking down on tax avoidance, the effect on wages is actually minimal. So that is why I said that the, the uh, nonpartisan uh, Joint uh, Committee on Taxes is still engaging in, newsflash, incredibly reactionary right-wing economics. Raising corporation taxes, raising corporate taxes is not going to end up taking money from your uh, pockets. It's not going to end up lowering your fucking tax burden. You understand? Or, I mean, it's not going to end up increasing your tax burden. Unless you're a corporation. And that's the real ticker here. And that's the reason why I say it's fucking bullshit. Finally, despite all the ways that the JCT analysis tilts the playing field against the Inflation Reduction Act, the claimed increase in middle class taxes is tiny. For example, according to the JCT, the federal tax rate on families earning between $50,000 and $75,000 a year would rise from 13% to 13.1%. And the benefits that you get from pushing for said bill would literally be significantly more than a 1% increase, okay? A 0.1% increase. So the GOP attack on this proposal is, in a word, pathetic. The only way that it might gain traction is the media both sides its reporting, which they are doing, by the way, failing to inform news consumers that Republican claims about the bill are, in fact, untrue, which they are not doing, of course, because that's what the media does. Remember when I called this out yesterday when uh, the, they literally said, Democrats and economists say that this has a uh, deflationary effect on inflation. Republicans, on the other hand, claim otherwise. And it's like, okay, who cares what the Republicans are claiming? Hey, just explain what the fucking actual situation at hand is. The fuck is wrong with you?